Hello everyone, we are back here at the Azure Ta channel with Tao Yang. Welcome, Tao. Hey everyone. Hi George. Thanks for having me. Yeah, it's great great to have you back here. I'm going to share my screen and go straight to to your blog post. I was looking on LinkedIn and I saw your blog post. Yeah, that's your your amazing blogging post. Thanks for, for sharing that. And that's remind me some work we did last year or year before. Yep. And um, and if you don't know Tao, Tao is a Microsoft MVP as his blog post and also have done a few videos, like I think four videos at Azure Tao before. He can follow Azure Monitoring, Terraform, and even wrote like a partial model for Terraform. But today we're going to go on Azure SQL Virtual Machines using BICEP. I'll move away from Terraform and how BICEP can help us now to, to fix all those issues that we had a year and a half ago when we tried to do Azure SQL Managing Instance and Virtual Machine. What's the pain points there and how BICEP and now all the improvements can help with that. Yep. All right. I have your blog post here. Yeah, so um, uh, so a little bit of background. George and I was in. Uh, we both were engaged. And we were working uh, in team, like in the same team, uh, on a very big uh, Azure migration project for a financial uh, organization within uh, in Australia. And um, so uh, together, George and I have done a lot of uh, infrastructure as code work for this uh, customer. Uh, we did SQL Pass. We did. And I think George did SQL Manage Instance, um, and then I I was tasked to um, to do the SQL uh, VM. Uh, you know, so we've done a lot of um, uh, ARM templates within uh, um, Terraform back then, and uh, um, and 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 the the problem we had um, back then was firstly like the, the Terraform wasn't. Uh, feature complete, so we had to rely on ARM template. And secondly, um, there's specific, you know, specific requirements from the customer that prevent them from using the um, the storage account as a, a cluster witness. So SQL cluster had to be um, created manually uh, outside of the um, from our infra as code components. And uh, but after that, um, after we all we both left the, um, this project, I did another project. Um, um, uh, where I I, I was uh, asked to help out the, the SQL consultants and I did some some work in uh, ARM templates and uh, and and uh, Azure DevOps YAML pipeline to um, to stitch them together so to configure um, a SQL cluster using um, using the cloudness in a storage account so. That's all the all the like the, the the work I've done in the past. So um, eighteen months or so, I've spent a lot of time uh, on this uh, product. So I thought, you know, this is uh, being a Christmas break. I'm actually in between engagement. I got this month off. Um, I thought, you know, I'll spend some time and try to update that all the code into Bicep, and also um, uh, produce a uh, a working. A uh, sample where I can provision a a, a SQL cluster uh, or its own uh, availability group uh, cluster end to end. So initially, um, what what we did, like when I first look at uh, this uh, this product um, eighteen months ago, uh, in order to create a cluster, um, you, you know, we can create a Windows failover cluster and a SQL uh, VM join the cluster, but the creation of the uh, always own availability group was a manual task, right? So we had to, um, you either have to go to SQL Management Studio and go through the wizard to to create, or you know, you, ha you have to script it in in SQL. And then after that, you come back to to um, to uh, you can come back to ARM and use another ARM template to create the listener and the load balancer for the uh, for the always own availability group. So it's like. Four, um, there's like a four step process, but step three is manual. So that kind of like a breaks um, the whole end to end automation piece. 
But I think until then, uh, sorry, uh, since then, Microsoft has released um, has released a um, a feature that I, I don't think I, I couldn't find any documentation. I just found that in in the portal you can actually um, if you go to the portal and go to SQL VM and uh, you go to hard availability, you can actually configure the uh, OS own availability group now. And, and then this one actually creates a availability group. Because the problem we had in the past is you can't create a, a availability group without any, any databases. So you have to create like a dummy database, take a backup, and then create the uh, availability group, and then take the database out and put your real database in, right? So stuff like that. But now it's all doable by here. But I, can't, I couldn't find any inform, um, documentation on exact construct of how to do that. So I basically did in the, in the portal, extracted the code from the deployment that I created in the back end, and then figured it out um, how to do it. And although uh, it's, um, if you go look at the ARM template documentation page, it's been documented now, but I, I, I think it's missing some parts in here. It's not complete. Um, yeah, so I think I think your that's where your blog post is very you know yeah. handy because it's very complete. It's from experience, yeah. right? you know, it's recent, and is using bicep. If someone using you know go and see Terraform now is complete. Probably it is as mm. well. You probably can do the same thing Terraform yeah. or ARM templates. Um, bicep at the end of the day will be translated to ARM template. Yeah, but I mean. Anyone can follow those steps, and what you can do and show for us your code, maybe you know you can share yeah. your screen. I can stop sharing my screen here. Okay, so this is a. Uh, by the way, the link to this uh, repo is from is from my blog post, right? So, um, um, this is the main template. It's got like over fifty or so um, parameters you need to fill in, uh, stuff like um, you know the VNet. And there's a sub that you uh, you want to connect to. How many virtual machines uh, you you want to create? Um, you know, like say for example, if you want to create like a two node cluster, you put two. But I think there's a limitation on how many uh, SQL VMs can be uh, part of the availability group. I think it's maximum six. So I should have put a validation here saying you know between one to six, but you know forgot to do that. So I think maximum would be. Would be should be six, um, and then the, the prefix uh, you give to the VM. So basically, a, a, a sequence number will be appended after the prefix that you know to construct the name of the VM, VM size, the OS disk type, and the data disk. The you know the actual data disk that creates on this VM that will be used for um, for the SQL uh, data log and the uh, TempDB disks. Uh, best practice is that for the data disk, you need to turn on the host read-on location. You don't need to do that for the for the log disks, but um, you should also do that for um, TempDB uh, disks, according to um, you know the, the best practice for the from the DBAs. Um, uh, so this is only like although you, we have um, SQL on Linux um, in in the marketplace now, but um, this will only work for Windows, uh, SQL on Windows VM. So these are um, the uh, the images that's uh, supported and tested. Um, the SQL VM <coughs> component can you can you can use that to set the the SQL Server SKU, whether it be a developer or enterprise. Um, in in this case, um, because it's a cluster, you need to join to the domain, so you got. Providing information about the domain and OU as well, um, the local admin uh, credential for the VM, uh, SQL connectivity type, uh, SQL port number, and the, the storage workload type. This is, this dictates how those uh, those data disks will be formatted. So if you put like OLTP, that will be formatted using 64k block size, which is optimized for um, for SQL. And you can set the SQL license type. So if you uh, if you are uh, you have like on-prem SQL licenses, you can use the Azure uh, Hybrid Use Benefit. Um, so you don't pay extra for the licenses. 
Um, and if you want to use uh, EK, uh, Azure Key Vault as an EKM provider, so basically using Azure Key Vault to store the keys you use for the TDE encryption, you can enable that. Right? So, and, and in order to connect to the Azure Key Vault, you will need to uh, provide a service uh, credential, um, sorry, a, a service principal uh, ID and, and, and a secret. Um, and this service principal should have um, you know, specific permissions um, to um, to the Azure Key Vault. Um, I think it's a, a list get wrap and unwrap keys. Uh, if I remember correctly, it's documented somewhere. Um, one thing I think will be very beneficial is that to to get away, like if product if the product group can can update this and uh, and get away from using a principal by use manage identity from the SQL VM, that will be awesome because it's really really difficult to manage this, uh, you know, from our past experience, right? Yeah, it's um, a great feedback because we had that show and got yeah good feedback for the product team. Yeah. And and this was something that the customer asked for uh, as well. Like you know, uh, you know, why those VMs are running on Azure? Why do we need an, a service principal? Why can't we just use the manager identity of the VM? Um, and then uh, you know the the folder path for the SQL data log and tempdb, um, and and then which uh, which uh, disks like from the long number you will be used. To create the storage pool to host those drives, right? Uh, so this has all been defined. Um, so I did put, um, like in the parameter, there is um, there are uh, default parameters set, and then I also put some um, parameters in here, like in the sample parameters file you can reference, and you can see that you know how to construct these arrays, and then the other. Um, and this, like the data disk array, like, you know, basically what what properties need to specify in here. Um, and, and, so have, and you, uh, have you tested uh, increasing the number of disks or not? Yeah, that's that's a tricky question. <laughs> 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 uh, I, I hope that uh, uh, people never have to come to that stage, but unfortunately, Georgia and I have done this a lot, and sometimes that can be very, um, uh, can be can be uh, very painful. Um, I'll get to that later. So and optionally, you can uh, specify a, a you know a local SQL sysadmin account, right? So uh, you need to specify the username and password. If you don't, then they won't get created. Um, <clears throat> so SQL VM pr provides this capability to you know you can configure automatic backup. So basically, what it does is I think it creates a a SQL agent job under the hood, but and then uh, when you back up the database, it backs up directly to a blob container in the storage account. So it doesn't like you know how internationally in the in the old days, uh, SQL servers will back up those databases to a local disk first and then get picked up by uh, whatever database uh, sorry whatever backup application you use. But this one backs up directly to the storage account. But um, I, I don't know how useful this can be. Um, I've done two, you know, two, I work, I use, uh, I've done code for, uh, I've developed code for two, two separate environments, two different companies, and none of them are using this uh, capability because it only, you can only do like 30 day retention for those backups. So, and uh, you probably want have longer, long term backup as well. So, if that's the case, I think, you know, Azure, Azure Backup also supports uh, backing up Azure. Uh, databases on Azure SQL VMs. Um, so that can be a much better solution. So, and you can onboard that just as part of the, you know, setting up the VM backup. So you don't have to worry about uh, having a separate backup solution for just for your databases. Um, yeah, because that is a good question here. Like we are talking about SQL clusters on, you know, Azure VMs. Yeah. You know, or use case where you cannot use for some reason, you know, like Azure SQL, mm. and you need like a you know a full SQL Server on VMs in a availability group in a cluster yeah. with you know pool of disks is like a very complex setup that you can yeah. done be done everything using Bicep. Yeah, but there is a edge case where like we discussed, you know, increase the disks and backups. 
that's a good yeah. feedback, I think, for the product team. Yeah. Um, so there's a lot of configuration. If you want to use the Alphabet Matic Backup, you can specify all these parameters to configure. And then um, a SQL VM group is uh, like a virtual construct of a representative cluster, right? But you, you, you basically, uh, if it's a cluster VM, you need to firstly create the virtual um, <coughs> the, the uh, SQL VM group, which contains that uh, the name of the a cluster, the, the domain name, and then all the associated service accounts you need to use for that. And then when you create the VMs, you join those VMs uh, to this group. So that's how you uh, create a, a Windows failover cluster for SQL. Um, so you need to specify the VM group name, you've got to specify the, um, you know, um, uh, a witness, cloud witness uh, using the storage account. But I think, um, Last time I heard from the product group, like um, last year, uh, around October, November last year, they said they, um, the file share witness was coming. And uh, when I checked a few days ago, it is there now. So, um, however, I have not have not used it. I don't know what, what are the requirements. You know, how should I set the uh, file share? Can I use a storage account? Uh, you know, actual file share as a witness, all this stuff I haven't tested, and uh, so I haven't I left it out. Um, and and then um, basically this part here, like you know, how you configure the availability group rep replication, like uh, all this is not documented uh, in in the in the ARM documentation, but this was included uh, in the. Um, in, in, the, in the ARM template, I extracted from the deployment I created from the portal, right? So if you go through the, the wizard to create a uh, availability group, it creates a deployment, um, ARM deployment, uh, uh, like on the, um, under the hood. And this was included, uh, including stuff like, you know, which, uh, which VM should be the primary, which VM should be the secondary, how do you do the failover and stuff. Not documented, but extracted from, uh, from the portal. And uh, also need a load balancer for the for the uh, uh, availability group listener. The good thing about the load balancer is you create an empty load balancer. You don't have to worry about creating the probes, creating um, the backend pools and stuff. Just an empty load balancer, and then ARM takes it, takes care of everything else, right? So, so these are all the uh, parameters. Um, you know, I have I put conditions in here. Say if you want to enable as a cable. Uh, integration, I'll create a key vote uh, for you. Um, if you specify, say, I want to have a, a, a you know, create a cluster uh, by specifying the VM group name, a Windows storage account will be created. Uh, if you say, I want I have an auto backup, we'll create an auto backup account, you know. Um, and and then I um, create the, uh, the group, the VM group represent the cluster, you know, having all this information filled in, uh, just you know what's required to for the cluster. So basically, just say these are the service accounts and this is the storage account I need to use. But you don't have to specify the password. The password goes to uh, the SQL VM, um, and 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 then um, you know I have a I have a for loop for the SQL VMs. So if you specify I want two instances, we'll create two instances. But the catch is that because you are creating a cluster, you, you you create a cluster, like back under the hood, you create a Windows failover cluster on the first VM, and then the second VM will join that cluster. So those two VMs cannot be created concurrently, right? So you, uh, if I run a for loop, um, I can't guarantee that, you know, I can't guarantee this one will run sequentially, but I do need to have these two VMs uh, uh, created in a sequential order, right? So that's why I put a batch size uh, one here. So you only create like one uh, VM at a time. So batch size one for this um, for this module. So I don't end up creating both VMs at the same time. Yeah, very important um, detail. Yeah, yeah, this is very important. If you take that, this out, it will break. Um, and, and after that, um, then you create uh, uh, the listener. Uh, which uh, everything uh, to here 
this is not documented in in the arm uh, arm template documentation but this part is what was missing um, but I, I had to put in here uh, even when I run bicep you get a warning say this is not um, this is not required but I think it is <laughs> because how otherwise how would you uh, specify which one is a primary which one is a secondary and how was you know how do you synchronize um, stuff like that so yeah so um, this is pretty much everything um, so the, so that yeah. that listener is something that will be improved with the change that the product team did uh, well, this is the listener was, I, I think it's fairly new. Um, you know, you being able to create like the listener, when you create the listener, you actually create a valid, empty availability group uh, under the hood. That wasn't the case when we first looked at it. So this is already improvement there, but I think the documentation just need to be, uh, need to be, you know, made a little bit better. But unfortunately, when I look at the, um, when I look at the uh, ARM template uh, documentation, you know that you know everything is hosted on GitHub, right? I can't, I don't have access to the GitHub um, repo under the hood, so I can't, I can't see who made what changes and and and, and stuff. The history on, on that on that page, I couldn't see it. Okay. Yep. So, and this is it. So, if you want to uh, run uh, use this, so basically, I yeah, made some. Uh, sample commands here you can use a what if um, to see you know what's uh, uh, what what's going to happen and uh, on um, if you run this template with these parameters so there's a cluster dot parameters dot json if you want to use uh, create a cluster use this as a starting point and if you want to just create a standalone vm without cluster there's another one um, for that uh, for that, uh, for the kind of construct as well. So, uh, if you see that for uh, um, for the standalone, it's a lot easier. Uh, so they didn't have to have a lot of like all the um, cluster kind of stuff. You don't you don't need to specify. And I I use uh, Keyvault to store um, those uh, sensitive informations like username and password and stuff. Um, so I don't have to hard code it in here. So I recommend you do the same. But you know, by, by using a a, a key vault to store those, uh, you have to specify the uh, resource ID uh, of the key vault in the parameter file, and you also need to turn on the unable key vault uh, for uh, for template deployment. Uh, so some improvements. Uh, I know this is like you know. Um, I think this is like an MVP uh, type of uh, implementation, but you, uh, for security concerns in a, in a real organized enterprise, you probably want to uh, secure all these uh, resources, like these past resources, like key vault, uh, storage accounts, uh, and then uh, you know put them into a, a private endpoint. Right. So this is something that you can you can add yourself um, if this is a requirement. You know. You know, put them into a private endpoint. As long as you know uh, those SQL VMs can get to it, that, that should be fine. Okay, it's not including private endpoint, but yeah, it can be. It can be created by external. Or at least you know, put like the service, you know, the um, the service endpoint there. So I I just create like all those. They they're all public. You know, you know, but you know, this is just a, a dummy module for storage account. Um, you know, you can put more stuff in here. Um, you know, when you create a storage account, <clears throat> create a service endpoint or private endpoint, or however you want to do it. Right. Do you want people to do like pull requests for that, or if they want to, are you open for pull requests, or or just fork and and share? Probably be easier. Just just fork, just fork and share. Um, let's just do it yourself. I, I don't think it's uh, it's really difficult. Um, I mean, it's just you know. I, it's pretty standard stuff. I just, yeah, I didn't, I didn't want to waste too much time on that. So. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, that's fair enough. There's a lot already. And yeah, yeah. If you never use Bicep, you have the modules here that, you know, the source code you don't have to change. Pretty much going to pass the parameters. Yeah. Let me let me share. Like now, 
since you mentioned um, since you mentioned yeah, the disk extension, let me let, let's talk about that. Let me share a my browser window. Can can you see it? Yes. Okay. So uh, we had a lot of um, based on our past experience, we had a lot of requests. Like when when whoever is doing the uh, you know collecting the information about you know the, the target um, environment when they want to migrate to Azure, you know. Uh, people don't don't ask the same don't ask correct questions or they ask correct, correct questions but the you know the asset team the app owner don't have the answers for them and so you know you have to look at say okay so this database is say 500 uh, 500 gig and then I'll, I'll provision something accordingly but it's very important that you know and and very We've seen many times that they, the 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 IOPS requirement that they just overlooked, um, and we had a lot of issues uh, in our projects that we have to come back and then resize the disk and add additional disks uh, to it. Um, so you, with SQL VM, you can you can update um, you can update the uh, the disks. If you go to a SQL uh, VM in here, uh, storage configuration, storage configuration. Uh, if it's a standalone VM, you have the um, ability to add more uh, data disks. So what this one does is that you create. If you say I want to add more extended, um, you will create additional. Uh, Azure, Azure data disks and, and add that to a storage pool, to the storage pool that I was created before and, and extend it. Um, but if it's clustered, uh, the resource provider for SQL VM, uh, it doesn't it, it, it doesn't support it. So you can't you can't extend the disk if it's been clustered. However, it's not I don't believe it is a Windows um, I don't believe it's a Windows uh, Windows server limitation. Um, I've done this before, and 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 uh, I've done it with uh, you know uh, an another colleague we had in, in our team, James Barry. We we both did it. Um, uh, it is doable uh, in in uh, within Windows itself, but it's just not not doable in here. Maybe um, uh, I can write another blog post on how to do it. Uh, but the, the the thing is that you can't just say. Um, using the ARM template or bicep to extend the disk when it's clustered. So that's one problem. And the other problem is that um, when you create a storage pool in Windows, there's uh, like a column count. Uh, basically, uh, in the represent, uh, I think it's the it's based basically on the number of the the, the disks you have. And uh, and that the column count doesn't increase when you add additional disk to it. So uh, if you had had two disks and then you had another two, uh, the column count will still be two. So you better off just have four disks to begin with, and the column count will be four, and then the the, the performance is actually better, right? So because then you have you can have like four concurrent read and write instead of two. Um, so that's the, yeah, that's the other thing. Um, and and also uh, in in Terraform there was a problem like you. Um, the problem is that if you want to write extend the disk, you basically need to define another SQL VM resource block uh, and have um, the storage uh, in here. The disk configuration will say extend and with new disks, and, and then just have say, say for example, I had uh, line number zero and one in um, originally. Uh, for the data disk, I want to add another two, uh, would be six or seven, six and seven. Then I just say extend and then put six and seven here. Um, but you know, you have you basically defining um, this one particular resource twice, right? It's the same resource ID. One is to create the initial VM, uh, SQL VM, and secondly is um, is to extend it. But it's the same resource type, uh, but it's just different payload. Uh, in the in ARM API core, so it's not really item potent, right? So, in the ideal world, I should be able to say I just want to add, I just create a, add two more disks 
uh, in the initial configuration and extend it, but no, that's not the case. You have to define this again. And and if you have, you say, if you want to extend both uh, data disk and the log disk, then you need to daisy chain them, right? So <laughs> you need to have one additional block to uh, extend uh, data disk and another one to extend uh, log disk, and you need to make sure they don't run at the same time. So you need to daisy chain and put dependency here, say, uh, the the log, sorry, the, the, the data disk uh, extension is depending on the initial VM creation, and then the log disk uh, extension is depending on the data disk extension. So this can get very, very long, and we've done this before. It's not pretty. So, um, so yeah, so that's why I, I, I spent a lot of um, paragraphs talk, um, talking about the disk configuration and extension in my blog. Um, you know, the, the best scenario, the best situation is that if you uh, you know, try to try to have the accurate information when you create that VM, so you don't have to come to this stage. Because um, yeah, it's not fun. Yeah, these are edge cases, but still, you know, important because database can grow fast. Yeah. You need to increase the storage. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's still option. You can create a separate, but you cannot change the initial setup. It has to be a separate Correct. resource. Change it to X10 to include yep. the disks, not yep. just go there on that pool and change the pool. No, it has to be a yep. separate. That's yeah, not so, part of your bicep yet. It has to be a separate bicep. For yeah, that. so if you have like an existing monitoring um, um, solution set up for your SQL servers, you can like look at historical trend on like over a long term period, how much disk basically actually grows. Uh, for this database, and then you know what's the projected growth over over the next you know year or two years or three years, and then size of VM accordingly. Um, because another limitation is that you know each VM SKU can only support you know X number of um, data disks, and I we did have uh, situations where you know they want us to extend. Add more disks to it, but the VM just doesn't VM SKU doesn't support additional disks anymore. So we had to change the SKU, move the SKU to the other one, and that that presents another risk, right? So if you accidentally pick a VM SKU that's from another family, and uh, it doesn't support, if you know that that you know the in place upgrade might may not be supported. So if that's the case, that you have the you risking uh, for the VM to be uh, Totally destroyed and and recreated. Um, if that's the case, so uh, it's certainly more risky well, for that, than. Right, right. I think right, right first. Yeah, correct. So, like, yeah. so if you ever come to that situation, you gotta make sure that you know you can you can resize the SKU um, in here, so you can check the portal. Um, Now, do we still have that extension there, or that extension, oh, extension resource when you create the VM? Yeah, it's, show, it's showing the extension. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, yeah, the SQL VM is actually they, they used to be a SQL IS extension, but they just renamed it, and then at the newer version is called SQL Virtual Machine, but it's still presented as a as an extension in here. Yeah, yeah, and you can see the SQL Vito machine as a separate Azure resource. Yes, it's a separate resource. Can you show that? Yeah, it's in here. Yeah, no, yeah, notes that's like a, like a dashboard to show everything that's yeah. running on that VM. And you can see the license, the storage, all those configurations that was done on Bicep, backup, key vault, you can see everything here. Yeah, I think it's a nice way to see. Like, if you go in storage configuration, there. So I think there's a bug in the portal. Every time I click, click, click on that, oh, yeah, it actually goes to the right. computer. But it's here. Oh, yeah, um, yeah. Okay, yeah. The same that yeah. you can see there. Now you can see here in a separate resource. And yeah. that's the SQL extension that you should show there. And there are some. And and, uh, there. and uh, log analytics has a a. Um, um, a solution that for SQL assessment, mm. um, so you can you can you can enable that as well. 
I think that one, maybe one. So if you have, like, say, monitoring agent, uh, Microsoft monitoring agent installed and point into a log analytics workspace, you might as well just uh, just enable that as well. So you know, um, yeah. So this provides yeah, some basic. Yeah. Some people ask about patching. We're not we're not discussing here. We haven't discussed patching. Yeah. Um, that patching there. So there's a. Uh, Automated patching uh, capability in here. Um, I personally never used it. Um, it was never a requirement. Um, if you have, you know, if you patch the VMs, that also you know configure to have all the uh, SQL patches that come down as well. Uh, you can probably just leverage that. But um, I personally have not uh, used this before. Yeah, we haven't but used it. It turned out very easy. So. Um, you I can configure this in that. That's great, though. And follow your blog post as well. There's a lot of information there, steps, how you know to use the modules and what yeah. the modules are closing there. And probably you can see that there are things that are not not there yet. You can, yeah. you can it's a good start. You know, like it's more than MDP. It's a very detailed. And, you know, talking. I think a few months. To get on that stage, or we, or, yeah, and um, yeah, thanks for that for sharing that with us. And yeah, no problems. Um, yeah, I'm glad that I can. If anyone find that uh, you know this uh, post useful, or uh, you know, I, I think my effort, you know, right here is I spend five days. Uh, it's you know what's uh, you know what's the effort to um to share that with everyone. So. Uh, certainly, what has been painful for for me and for George um, last year, but you know, just glad you know we're, um, we're at stage we can share our experience. Yeah. yeah, it's great. Let's yeah, it's great to share that. Follow your blog post. Follow us here on on Ajata channel and ajata.com. And if you want to ask anything, yeah, go ahead. And but look, it's just a work. If you want to improve, you have to improve that yourself. And uh, don't, don't harass the Tao asking for improvements. He's not going to improve. Like, he's an open source. He <laughs> can't even, you know, fall. Well, yeah, uh, yeah, never say never. I probably, yeah, will. But, you know, stuff like, you know, like what we discussed, like private endpoint, and it's, it's just it's just so common um, because it's not, you know, it might not be the requirements for everyone. So that's why I left it out. But, yeah, you, you know, We've done that before, and it's not rocket science. But you know, stuff like you know, uh, file share goodness. Uh, I, I'm sure one day I'll probably have, when I have time, or you know, customer may have a requirement. I'll have a look at it later, um, see how I can improve it. Uh, but the construct is already um, already in here. So um, in the SQL VM groups, uh, you can see that you can <clears throat> you can use the file share witness path. And this was uh, this is new. This um, so I, I, yeah, I'm pretty sure one day I'll probably have a look at it. But because like you know the customer we had, you know, um, last year they didn't want to use the cloud witness because if you use a storage account uh, as a cloud witness, it's actually um, using blob storage and it's using a, a storage account key to access the the blob. And then the customer security requirements is like you can't use the the key to access the blocks to access storage account. So this is the main blocker at that customer. So they couldn't they couldn't use this and then they had to use a witness VM. Um, but you know file share could be a, you know if we have to go if this was like you know 18 months ago and then you know our life would probably be a lot easier um, to do that. Um, so we just create a, a, a file share or actual file share for example and, and use that as a witness. Yeah, that's the idea. And if you're doing that yeah. now, I recommend yeah. you try to do that. Yeah. Only do the VM like you're doing here if you really have to. Um, but look, that's that's solving so many problems now that you know, it's not easy to create a SQL Amazon. And now yeah. you have this bicep, pretty much everything's working there. It's a good start. And um, yeah. With very yeah. small improvements like private endpoints, and maybe that 
I share. You have a very enterprise great level of solution, and thanks for sharing that. Yep. Thank you, George. Thank you. See you next time, guys. See you guys next time. Bye.